there's been certainly some changes since what was revealed at BlizzCon. Um, I guess, for example, the Replicant yeah. is no longer there. Speaking just to that, it, it, you know, it seemed too good to be true when you when you first saw it. Was that just the case through your testing? You realized it was just far too um, strong. The biggest problem with the Replicant was um, we actually got a lot of negative feedback uh, after BlizzCon both internally and externally, so that was a big contr contributing factor. But another factor was um, that unit was actually reducing choice, not increasing it. Uh, so for example, if I'm a Terran player going up against a Protoss, I, want, I don't want that Protoss player to use siege tanks against me, so I don't want to build siege tanks. So it's actually reducing choice, so that was also another big uh, reason why we decided to remove the Replicant. I'm sure you've gotten this a lot, and this isn't so much a gripe onto the current state, but I'm just wondering your thoughts on the A-Move army, look at the Protoss Ball of Death, and with if you can give kind of any specific examples of steps you guys are trying to take to move away from the big, big so, Ball of Death. Uh, in Heart of the Swarm, we're trying to make um, each of the races a little more diverse in what they're capable of doing. So for example, right now, as you said, Protoss players, generally speaking, like to defend up until they gather their perfect force. Uh, they don't really, they don't even leave their base. They just defend there, and uh, once they're ready, they push out for for the one final push. So that's why we've added uh, units such as the Oracle or the Tempest that are good at harassing enemy bases, that are good at picking at um, enemy army stuff like that. So we're hoping to see a more variety in terms of being able to do not only what you can do now, but also um, for players that do want to harass the enemy um, and gain the edge that way, uh, we'll be able to utilize the new units that we're putting into the game. Um, and similarly, uh, on the Terran right now, Terran really has to use utilize their Marine and Marauder drops in order to be successful. So we're kind of feeling that they are like lacking that option of just sitting back gathering a powerful army, so that's why we decided to include the three new mechanical units so that a more mech-based terror strategy will involve involved a little more defensive, less so um, harass-based gameplay. Lots of people are obviously wondering about the Heart of the Swarm beta as well. Um, I'm sure you can't give when it's <laughs> going to start, but do you guys have any plans in terms of how you're going to distribute beta keys? Is it going to work like it did with the game through pre-orders, or is that just completely no idea? Yeah, I have no idea. No I just idea. know that the beta is coming soon. <laughs> so. It's coming soon, yeah. alright. That'll soon, <laughs> soon is a word that will work. Yep. Major lessons learned from Wings of Liberty that you guys are trying to carry over in the heart of the swarm? Any big overarching principles you're trying to shift? Um, I think in terms of the game design aspect of it, uh, we're actually going with a different approach. So in Wings of, the Wings of Liberty, we didn't have players playing the game so much like we do now. So we're actually, in Heart of the Swarm, we're actually looking at the possible problems that are in Wings of Liberty and trying to address them through putting in new units um, that specifically counter those uh, problems. Um, and on the balance side, actually, um, we, we learned a lot of lessons, I think, uh, throughout, throughout the past. And I think the biggest thing is it's not just about the changes that we make, but it's also uh, the balance of the game is dependent on the skill level of the players as well as how innovative their new strategies can be when we make changes. So um, what we've learned it, is that whenever we take big steps, um, the results are way too crazy. So we try to go, um, we try to move in smaller steps. Um, and just in general, um, having tried a large number of balance changes in the live game as well as the beta in the past, um, I think we're kind of well equipped to handle issues that arise due to the new units um, in our swarm. Yeah, and obviously a lot of this testing will happen throughout the beta. You guys try to get balance for release um, and all of that, so that'll be good. Any current testing on a professional level, or is it all internal at the moment? Uh, no, it's all internal at the moment. Um, actually, MLG is one of the first times that uh, people have a glimpse at the beta preview build. Mm -hmm. um, this build will probably be very similar to what we have in the beta, um, and maybe closer to the beta, or if not within the beta, we'll get the pros to look at it in more detail and go from there. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the professional, uh, professional level, we're here at MLG right now. Uh, Implementing the new units is obviously going to be a major shift in strategic play, yep. things players need to do. Uh, how is that being handled at professional tournaments such as this? Are we are you expecting people to just pick it up gung-ho, or are we going to stick with Wings Liberty for a while until it's 
I guess that's really up to the tournaments. Um, I guess what we're trying to do is we're trying to do our best job possible so that uh, during the beta we can have Heart of the Swarm as closely balanced as possible. So um, the tournament organizers that do want to use Heart of the Swarm um, have good success as well. But uh, I guess that's really a question for the tournament organizers organizers whether um, or not they're going to use Heart of the Swarm right away or stick to Wings of Liberty until the metagame settles in Heart of the Swarm yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah.